black interchangeably. Okay, colored is the term um, that was used in from the 1920s through to the 1960s uh, when the term black becomes a term of self-designation for people of color um, in order to create an alliance of people of color around the term of, of, of black politics. So the League of Colored People is set up in 1933. You also have, of course, the migration of colonial nationalist intellectuals. So most famously, of course, you have all the leaders of the Indian National Congress um, at coming to um, at be educated in London, most famously, of course, um, at the figure of Gandhi, but many, many others um, come. Um, uh, and you have the first ever Pan-African Congress um, held in Manchester in 1945. Okay? So there's a significant, you know, Britain continued, was a, an important uh, site of both uh, uh, physical and intellectual labor um, before 19. 47 from um, uh, four colonial subjects across the empire. Indeed, in 1948, um, the, uh, 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 the British Nationality Act is passed, which is a sort of payback for the Second World War effort because it declares that basically all imperial subjects are de facto citizens of Britain. That is to say that they can move freely to Britain and enjoy the rights of British citizens. Um, and that's important because there is a labour shortage in the immediate post-war period. Um, Britain is continuing to maintain um, a, uh, 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 its, um, uh, uh, its uh, national service and there's a labour shortage in key sectors of the economy. And so you have uh, the active recruitment of colonial workers by both the British government and at British companies. So, for instance, there, um, at London Transport, the buses basically in London, was one of the companies that went over to the Caribbean, to Jam Jamaica and Barbados particularly, to recruit workers to come and work on the buses. Um, the National Health Service, similarly, um, when it was a, a, a set up, depended uh, heavily on uh, uh, Caribbean um, uh, nurses. And I'm going to show you a charming film of, actually maybe I'll do it now, uh, uh, a, a, uh, this is made by the Colonial Film Unit and it's an account of uh, life in London and how utterly fantastic it is. <laughs> the idea is not, it's not just an advert for um, uh, 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 for, for, for buses. It's an it's a, um, explanation about the nature of cultural life in Britain. Okay? It's an explanation of the types of values that you're meant to inhabit, um, as well as a description of basically how you get about. Okay? And it's, it's aimed, you know, it's produced by the Colonial Film Unit, and it's aimed at British colonial subjects who would be coming to Britain either to work or to study, to help familiarize them with British culture so that they always have their money ready and that when they meet a conductor and they never push and shove or talk too loudly or do any of the things that people absolutely never do um, when they are waiting for a, um, a, a, a bus. Um, and as I said, the importance of these things is that they are part of the general recruitment of um, uh, colonial uh, subjects, of, of the bringing of colonial subjects into uh, Britain um, itself. Now, I put the figures up here of the immediate uh, censuses of 1951 and, uh, to 1961 in case of the Afro-Caribbean population um, and 1951 to 1970 one in terms of the Indian and Pakistani um, population. This graph maps um, the overall uh, 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 rates of um, uh, uh, size of immigration and the line is the percentage as of the um, uh, population as a whole. The point that I want to make here 
is that the numbers are infinitesimally small, really, um, in the 1950s and the 1960s. They certainly um, accelerate, uh, this is 2000 um, and uh, 2001, they certainly are accelerating in the um, 21st century, but we're re really not talking about large numbers of people. What we are talking about, however, is a changing racial geography of Britain. In the old days, before um, the 1950s, you had particular communities, mixed race communities, and they were invariably port towns. They were places like Bristol, at, like Liverpool, with its, and like London, like um, South Shields, um, up in um, the um, uh, northeast, uh, like Cardiff, all port towns, basically. Um, in the 1950s and the 1960s, the pattern, the pattern of settlement is very different. Um, so you get, for instance, particularly in the Midlands, around Birmingham and Leicester and Coventry, um, also in the northwest around Manchester and Bradford and Oldham and Rochdale, the, old t the center of the textile industries. Um, these places suddenly begin to, which were, you know, homogeneously white working class areas, suddenly become... Uh, uh, more diverse and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, um, uh, complete with people of colour for the first time, really, that Britons would have seen, pe Britons living in those areas would have um, had uh, seen a person of colour, let alone let, have them as their uh, neighbour. And that creates, as we're about to see it, an important white racist uh, backlash. The other key part of this is that you have a new political consciousness uh, by these um, uh, uh, um, uh, colonial um, migrants. Um, you have the, basically in 19, the 1950s, 1958, you see the formation of the Indian Workers Association and the um, uh, foundation of the West Indian Gazette in London. And um, in 1964, the Pakistani Welfare Association um, formed in, in um, the Slough, right next to... Um, uh, uh, Ricky Gervais's uh, The Office, no doubt. Uh, the point is that, that these communities really for the first time begin to break apart by their point of origin. We're no longer talking about a league of coloured people, we're talking about the advancement of the interests of specific sort of post-national communities. But again, the migration of people of colour is really not the main story in terms of numbers. There's also an important story to be told about European migration, um, the, e the so-called EVWs, the European voluntary workers, again recruited by the British government and commercial um, uh, outfits to, f uh, to fill the um, uh, labour shortage. Um, you can see numbers of, uh, greatest numbers of, 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 of Poles tiny numbers of, of, um, uh, of, uh, of Jewish emigres um, from, uh, uh, um, uh, from, uh, uh, from Germany, and um, uh, more significant numbers of Italians from southern Italy, and the continuing move of, um, uh, of people from um, Ireland. The other story, as you see in this um, image, is of emigration. Okay. Um, and uh, the numbers of emigrants leaving the UK actually outstrips the numbers of immigrants throughout the 1950s and the 1960s. And that's in large part because of the government sponsoring of emigration through the assisted passages scheme, um, uh, which was aimed at resettling Britons across the former uh, uh, dominions um, of Australia and New Zealand, um, of Canada um, and uh, South Africa, but also to white settler colonies where the white minorities seemed increasingly under threat, as in uh, 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 Kenya and uh, uh, Ro, uh, Rhodesia. Um, and in a sense, this, this resettling of Britons, the emigration of Britons, was a part of that cultural project that we talked about earlier. 
the spreading of people across the former empire so that they would, um, those countries would remain fully Anglo and orientated towards um, uh, Britain. So the white backlash, of course, happens um, uh, in a frenzy. Um, there are a series of so-called race riots in the late 1950s in areas um, uh, where there uh, were significant um, uh, um, uh, numbers of people of colour living in Nottingham, in Notting Hill, Middlesbrough and Dudley. Um, and more importantly, you have the mobilisation of white racist groups, as in this uh, Stop the Coloured Invasion um, uh, demonstration held in Trafalgar Square in 1959. Now, quite what the political basis of this white backlash is, is hard to pin down. Um, it's not a coincidence that when Oswald Mosley, the old leader of the British Union of Fascists, um, uh, comes back onto the political stage in the 1950s, he does it by um, uh, putting himself up as a candidate in Notting Hill um, right after the riots, okay, and arguing for uh, repatriation of um, uh, uh, colonial migrants. Um, it's also true that you have local defence groups, local white defence groups, that were clearly affiliated with the right of the political spectrum, but not exclusively of the right of the political spectrum. Many trade union members and trade union leaders were, were profoundly racist because they thought people of colour would steal um, at so-called uh, British jobs. But it's clear that the greatest connection was with the fringes of the Conservative Party, um, most famously um, uh, two figures, Cyril Osborne and uh, uh, Peter Gr Griffith. You can see this, this um, poster. Griffith, um, in the 1964 election in Smethwick in London, has an even more pithy poster, um, which was, if you want a nigger for a neighbour, vote Labour. Um, and it's no coincidence that it is the Conservative Party in 1962 that passes the Commonwealth Immigration Act, which closes the door basically on that expansive definition that, of the 1948 uh, British National Act um, and tries to restrict Commonwealth immigration to those who come with vouchers. That is to say, you now had to have a voucher for a specific job in order to gain access to the country. Now the other element of this process was the attempt to try and academically and politically figure out how, um, uh, uh, how people of colour were going to be integrated into British society. There were the white racists who said, we don't want anything to do with these people, we want repatriation, we want to defend our English way of life that they don't understand. There were other people who were saying, no, um, uh, we, you know, these people are, are, uh, have been part of the British Empire, they're part of the great British cultural world, and we want them to integrate into British culture. Um, and you can see this beginning um, in the work of social anthropologists based in, uh, in Edinburgh, at the University of Edinburgh. The man Kenneth Little is, is uh, the, the leader of this entire um, uh, school in Edinburgh of social anthropologists. He, uh, his book, Negroes in Britain, 1947,